All right? He told him that day. What are we saved from? Well, we're saved from, number one, the penalty of sin, which is death and hell. The power of sin. Have you ever struggled to do right? There's that power. It just seems like I fight between right and wrong. And, and then the presence of sin. Okay? We're saved from that because there's no sin in heaven. Thank the Lord for that. Now, the Bible says, whosoever shall call upon the name of the Lord shall be saved. There's that Bible word again, saved. The Bible says in Acts 4, 12, neither is there salvation in any other. For there is none other name given among heaven whereby men must be saved. Once again, Ephesians 2, 8, 9, for by grace you is saved through faith and not of yourselves. It's the gift of God. Yesterday I preached. <laughs> He's going to represent those of us that are in jail. We're in bondage. Okay? We are condemned to die. We have the death sentence upon us. Okay? And man, doesn't look too good for you right now. That all of us are under the sentence of death. Nobody will escape death. I, I've never met anybody that didn't die except for Jesus who died and rose again. Um, there was Enoch who walked with the Lord. I think he was probably the only one of the preachers in the scriptures that did not die. Okay? But everybody else, they've not done so well. Okay? We're all going to die someday. Now, watch this. In Hebrews right there, it says, For as much then, as the children are partakers of flesh and blood, he also himself likewise took part of the same, that through death he might destroy him that had the power of death, that is the devil. And deliver them who through the fear of death, okay, notice that, the fear of death. Most people don't like to talk about death because they're afraid to die. They're not ready, so they don't want to talk about it, and as though it was never going to happen, okay? But it's still there. They're, you're going to have to deal with it someday, that's for sure. Now, so we're going to die, and Brother Edward, here he is in jail, and he's shaking the bars, he's saying, let me out. He said, let me out. He says, I'm not guilty. He says, I'm not guilty. I'm not guilty. Yeah. <laughs> not me. I've not done it. That's for sure. Man. And you know what? Your works won't get you out. Just because you're a good person, you know, that's not going to get you out. Titus 3, 5 says, not by works of righteousness, which we have done, but according to his mercy and his grace, he saves us. We don't deserve to be saved. Okay? You can, you can be you could be a church mouse. I mean, you're, 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 you could have grown up going to church when the time you was a wee little child. But that doesn't mean that you're out of this sentence of death. You know, you can get baptized. You can take the Lord's Supper. You can go to confession, but you're still condemned to die. You're still a sinner. Now, there's only one thing that can get you out, and that's the Lord Jesus Christ. There's four facts that you need to know to know for sure that you're going to heaven to be able to get out of jail. First thing you got to know is that everybody's a sinner. The Bible says, for all have sinned and come short of the glory of God. Each and every one of us have sinned. Nobody could stand up and say, I'm without sin. No, everybody. You might not have killed anybody or robbed a bank, but we've done other things that are sins. Sin is anything that we think, say, or do that breaks the heart of God. And everyone is guilty of sin. Man, there's common sin. Some people don't think that they deserve to go to hell because they think they're really good. Well, let me help you see if you can pass this test. Some common sins. Lust. Strong desire for something that's not yours. Greed. Okay. Um, lying. You know, we're born. The Bible says we're born from the womb. Lying. A little baby screams and hollers, acts like they're dying. And then you go and pick them up and they stop like if somebody's flipped off and spit. <laughs> They were lying. They want you to think they was dying when they're not. They just want you to pick them up, okay? We're born that way. Uh, gossiping, saying things, you know. Now, I'm not one to go around spreading rumors, but I just think maybe you ought to know about this. Well, you know, we just because it's true don't mean you need to say it, okay? Disobedience, I'm sure nobody in this front row has ever disobeyed. No. Man, are you kept losing your temper, okay? Oh, yeah. I don't think nobody's passed the tip. Cussing? Okay, these are common cheating, uh, taking the Lord's name in vain. Well, a lot of people do that, don't they? Oh, I, I don't even know of some born again believers that do that and have taken God's name in vain. These are common sins that people do, okay? Uh, shoplifting, okay? Uh, hatred, 
uh, obscene gestures, uh, dirty jokes, okay, uh, immorality, uh, being faithful to your husband wife, pride, okay, well, we got pride stealing, yeah, uh, road rage here, in the LA area, road rage, are you serious? Uh, a bad attitude? No, no. Uh, not me. Deceitfulness? Okay, we keep going, but I think all of us would say, ooh, buddy, you hit a bunch of mine. <laughs> Man, you hit them right there. Everybody is sin. Now, the same thing you got to realize, and we'll come, here's another one inhaling or drinking things that harm the body? Huh? Romans 6 23, the wages of sin is death. We're going to die. We're in a world death row. We're condemned to die. Why? Because we're all sinners. And that penalty of sin is death in hell, okay? The Bible says in Hebrews 9, 27, And it is appointed unto men once to die, but after this the judgment. Someday we'll stand before God and have to give an account, okay? They ask people in a survey, what do you do to get to heaven? How do you get to heaven? What do people think you would have to do to get to heaven? Well... The most popular answer is to be good. How many times have we asked people to, if you die today, you know you go to heaven? And they say, oh yeah. How do you know? Well, I'm good. <laughs> All the time people say that. Well, how good do you have to be to get to heaven? They think it's like a big giant scale. And all of our works are put in this scale. And if my good outweighs my bad, I go to heaven. But that's not true. You're not getting to heaven by your works. I've already quoted you scriptures about that. There's no way. Let me just take a screwdriver and let me loosen your little halo and help you realize you're not as great as you think you are. We have all done things wrong. And if you could get to heaven by being good, why did Jesus die? His death would have been in vain. Okay? He died because we are all deserved. No man, no man ever gets to heaven until they realize I'm a sinner and I deserve hell. Ooh, right. the bad news. But they think, well, if I'm good, I'll get to heaven. Uh, keeping the Ten Commandments. I've heard people say that. And you know what the problem with that is? They, don't, they can't even tell the Ten Commandments. <laughs> they can't. Well, how can you obey them if you don't even know what they are? Well, uh, don't spit on the sidewalk. Uh, don't slap your mama. Uh, you know, it's like, don't kick your neighbor's dog. You know, they, they can't even say it. Uh, what do I do to get to heaven? Receive communion. Well, if I partake in communion, I go to heaven. Some people think that. Getting baptized. Those are good things, but those are words. I'm related to a religious person. <laughs> there was somebody in my family that was a preacher. Okay? Okay? They claim a higher power. AAA does that. Higher power. And that higher power could be anything. It could be anything. It could be that light bulb that he wanted to be. But no, no, no. It's the higher power is God. Lord Jesus, amen. But anyway, uh, you know, join a church. Well, you know, that doesn't get you saved. No more than, well, I was born in a garage. That doesn't mean you're a car. <laughs> I'm a member of the Lions Club. That doesn't mean you're a lion, okay? It doesn't, make, it doesn't work that way. Okay, be sincere. A lot of people are sincerely wrong. <laughs> amen. The, the people that did all the polling that said that Hillary was going to win, you know what they said? They said, we were wrong. But they were sincere. Those pollers were sincere. They thought they had it all figured out. It's like, hello, wow. A lot of people are sincere. Just because you're sincere doesn't mean you're saved. Okay? Uh, about it. The Bible says the gift of God is eternal life through Jesus Christ our Lord. So Jesus paid the sin debt because why? We're condemned to die. We're on death row. We've got to be free. We need to get out. So Jesus paid the pardon. So you know, Jesus, they nailed him to the cross. They put hands, or they put nails to his hands and his feet. They pierced his side. They put a crown of thorns on his head, okay? Jesus died for me, amen? The Bible says right there in Romans chapter 5 and verse number 8, it says, but God committed his love toward us and that while we were yet sinners, Christ died for us. Jesus died for you. Jesus died for me. He loves me. He loves you. That's why he died whenever he laid down his life and he went through that terrible crucifixion. Why did he do that? He was paying the sin debt. He was the Passover lamb, if you would. 
that was being acted out there that day. And so here's Jesus. He's paid the pardon, okay? He's paid the sin debt. The Bible says, whosoever shall call upon the name of the Lord shall be saved. The Bible says in John 1, 12, but as many as received him, to him that gave you the power to become the sons of God. So you must receive it, okay? If, if I was here today, and I got the pardon right here, oh yeah, and I'm the warden of the prison, and I come down here to give this criminal his part. He's been free. He does not have to die to pay for his sins. And if I go down there and offer it to him, and he says, not now. Hey, you want this? <laughs> not now. Is it because you're enjoying these comforts? So I mean, you just like being behind bars. You like being separated from your family? Are they that bad? I mean, really? Uh, you, you're like, not now. Well, if I, you know, and, and he says, I'm not ready. You're not ready. You're behind bars, days away from being executed, and you're saying, not now. I'm ready. I mean, you can take this part, and you can be free, and you can go home, and no longer will this sentence be upon you. Not now. I'm not ready yet. Uh, he says, tomorrow. How about it? You want it? How about tomorrow? <laughs> tomorrow? Why tomorrow? Why not today? Right. Today is the day of salvation. Now, you are not guaranteed of tomorrow. You might die and go to hell before tomorrow. Let you say, man, that's crazy. See, what you got to do is you got to receive the pardon. Okay? You must accept it and receive it. And people have excuses why they don't want the pardon from their sins. Common excuses, they say, not now. <laughs> well, if not now, when? Okay? I've got some things to straighten out first. You need God's help to get your life straightened out. Okay. Uh, I, I need to understand more. Hey, listen, when I got saved at the age of seven, I didn't understand everything. I just knew enough to realize I was a sinner headed for hell, and I believe Jesus died for me. Okay? What more do you need to understand? Uh, I don't think I need God. Oh, yeah? Oh, yeah? Let's have another 9-11. And watch that. Hey, when that took place, the strip joints and the bars, and everybody was praising God. Right. And you don't think you need God? Oh, we do need the Lord. That's for sure. Amen. We need God. Too many hypocrites. Now, isn't that retarded? Too many hypocrites? I'm not going to take it because there are too many. That's like saying I'm not going to church because there's hypocrites there. Well, hello. You are one and I am one. Hypocrites to anybody that says one thing and does another, or they believe one way and they don't act like they believe it, okay? Okay, it's like, it's like saying, I ain't gonna eat no more. The other day I went down to McDonald's and there was a Burger King employee that was in there and he was ordering a Big Mac. I'm never going back to Burger King again. Because there's hypocrites there. You're laughing because that is so ridiculous. That is so stupid. Are you kidding? What are you? Too many hypocrites. Oh, come on. You've just been hurt. Somebody hurt you and you haven't dealt with it and got over it. I've done it many times. That's like saying, I get, I get, I get saved many times. It's like saying, I get married every day. Every day I asked Loretta, I got up this morning, I said, Loretta, will you marry me? You know, that's going to get old after a while. My wife's going to say, Kevin. Don't you know that June the 9th, 1984, you made the best decision you could ever make to cast me to marry you? She reminds me of that quite often. But you know what I'm saying? I keep asking her to marry me every day. She's like, okay, enough of this. I'm tired of this. We exchanged rings. We exchanged vows. It was a done deal on that day. Why do you keep asking me? You don't need to get saved every day. It's a one-time thing. When you ask him to save you, he gives you eternal life, not temporary life. Right. It's eternal life through Jesus, not through your good works. You're still going to mess up after you get saved. You're still going to sin. And that don't mean God's going to say, okay, you got to go to hell now because you said a bad word. <laughs> well, no. Your fellowship is broken. Just like your kids, when they disobey and they mess up, fellowship is broken, right? Things ain't good. But that doesn't mean they're not your child. You don't kick them out and say, you're not my kid no more. Get out of my house. You broke her few. No. Fellowship is broken. You're still their child. Same way with God. 
We still belong to him. The fellowship is broken. Okay? And so, boy, thank the Lord for the security of the believer. That's for sure. Uh, I'm sincere. Once again, you can be sincere, but that doesn't mean that you're right. That's for sure. January 10th, 1971. I was pardoned. I was sitting in church. The preacher was preaching. But he was preaching about heaven. And he was preaching about hell. And whenever he explained God's simple plan of salvation, it's like the lights turned on in my head. It's like I understood what it meant to be condemned to die, to be headed for hell. And the Holy Spirit of God began to convict me because I saw myself as a sinner. I saw myself going to hell, and I was brokenhearted, and I didn't want to go to hell. And the preacher said, if you'd like to ask Jesus to save you, put up your hand. And my hand went up. My tears were running down my face. I was crying. I was weeping. I was crying so hard I was a sunk in the air. And my daddy said, son, what's the matter? And I couldn't talk. And he sensed that I needed to be saved and that the Lord was dealing with me. And so he says, Kevin, do you want to get saved? And I said, yeah. And he said, well, come on. He took me down to the front. The preacher's wife met me there with a little red New Testament. We kneeled down right in front of the altar. And I remember her going through the plan of salvation, explaining it very simple, just like I've shared it with you today. And she said, Kevin, wouldn't you like to ask Jesus to save you? Wouldn't you like to have that pardon and be whew, free? Wouldn't you like to have that? Oh, man. And that day, January 10th. 1971, a little seven-year-old, red-headed, freckle-faced boy bowed down and said, Oh, Lord Jesus, forgive me and save my soul and take me to heaven. I knelt down a sinner headed for hell, and I got up the saint headed for heaven. Amen. Oh, thank the Lord. You Could you tell me your story? Hey, hey, if I came down and talked to you and said, You die right now, would you wake up in heaven or in the fires of hell? One way you'll know you're saved is you'll say, I remember when I accepted the Lord. Let me help you word a simple prayer. You repeat these words after me and say it and mean it in your heart. Dear Jesus, I realize I'm a sinner that deserves hell. Please forgive me of my sins. As I put my faith and trust in you alone to save me from the penalty of death. You're here today and say, Preacher, I just prayed that prayer with you. And I meant it with all my heart as I was talking to God. You say, Preacher, I prayed that prayer with me with you today. I accepted the Lord right here in my seat. Would you slip your hand up and say, Preacher, I prayed that prayer with you. Preacher, God bless you. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Several here. Some here. Some right there. 